Hello there everyone, how you doing today? Today we're going into r slash entitled parents to find parents who are buttholes and three halves. If you enjoy, like and subscribe. And without further ado, let's get started, okay? The pains of giving someone a free ticket. So, this just happened yesterday. So this Saturday, I have two tickets to go to StarCast, a wrestling convention. My brother ended up getting the V and cannot go. With my brother out of action, I decided to ask my cousin's son, who I think of like a nephew if he wanted the extra ticket. He seemed super stoked to meet Ric Flair and Bret Hart, both of whom I have wholeheartedly wanted to meet and get their autographs and get pictures with. My nephew excitedly says that he has nothing planned that day and would love to go. Later I get a message from his dad that his dad wants to talk to me beforehand. Beforehand should mention now that my nephew is 16 years old and has a license and a car. I found out that my nephew will not be allowed to go unless his father goes with him. Which I find weird, but hey, whatever, not my kid and not my rules. I really do not want to talk to my cousin, and to be honest, to be blunt, he's an asshole to a degree, and I can no longer tell people I'm related to him without getting weird looks. I'm pretty sure he's an undiagnosed bipolar uh, mental illness his father suffered from. Anyways, I'm thoroughly messaged my cousin the date of the event where is he going to be at and how long it will be open how to buy a ticket for himself and how much they cost then he proceeds to ask me to buy him a ticket and that he'll pay me back tomorrow now my cousin's the type of cheap bastard who will go to dinner and pretend he has forgotten his wallet he'll also bug the staff to give him free stuff when he recognizes student that he is taught it's embarrassing how much someone can belittle themselves for a free bowl of chili. Knowing this, I have no intention of buying this prick a ticket and waiting to see if he will actually pay me. He could also very easily change his mind and I would be stuck with another ticket I don't need. Keeping civil, I tell him that he can just buy a ticket at the door. I even messaged the event staff and asked if they would be selling tickets at the door to make sure he wouldn't be SOL. Next, my cousin asks me how I already got my tickets, so I tell him I brought mine online. Further, he asks me if this is still an option, which I tell him it is. So he says, pick me up a ticket and I will leave the money with your mom. I let that text sit for a couple of hours thinking of ways to politely tell him I am not buying his ticket which I end up making an excuse that money is tied up and I can't purchase him one right now. Later that night, he sends me a message saying, With all we have going on that day, I've tried to compromise and work it out, but it shouldn't be this hard. Count us out of this one. Uh, it would be best in the future if big events like this to ask us first if we have anything going on as a family so I don't have to disappoint my kid with this one. I have to disappoint him twice. I simply reply, if a man in his 40s can't figure out how to buy a ticket online, then he has more pressing problems. I'm not your mom, I'm not gonna buy you a ticket. Then I put my phone on silent and stopped arguing with him. He left more messages that I never replied to, and to be honest, I think I'm done with him. My brother has already cut him out of his life. My cousin said, knowing and being willing to put information out there are two different things. I tried and my son knows. Second, I said, not to upset my kids, then you turn disrespectful. I'm not getting to the point of paying tickets out of respect. My son has a scrimmage and if you would like to see him. So because I would supply an a-hole a second ticket, I have disappointed a t kid, even though he could have brought them at the door or used a prepaid visa card or something. In the end, I feel bad about my nephew for missing out because he ended up with an entitled dad who would rather torpedo a fun trip and then put forth any effort. 
My cousin is already telling family members that I was the aggressor and was uncompromising. Oh, how sad. Just because you gave his son a ticket that you happen to have, the adult wanted you to buy him a ticket. And basically you had the other ticket go to waste because he's an asshole. Okay. Well, that sucks. Entitled mom relentlessly tries to punish me. A little backstory. My 28 female mom, my 48 female, has always been into drugs, alcohol, and infidelity. Her and my father were married for 10 years before he caught her with his brother. After moving out, she tried to turn his family against him by telling everyone that her excuse was for cheating was because he was beating her. She has always told lies that suit her own narrative, which has caused a historical strain on our relationship. A few years ago, I was living in the city and looking to move. She offered me her basement, which only had the framing done on it. The deal was I would renovate it and live there for five years with no rent. After a few months of living there, I emptied my savings and had all the renovation materials delivered. I then had to buy another car because mine had broken down. My mother then waited for my money to be invested and then to blackmail me and tell me I either had to put the house 300k in my name or move out. She also wanted to use one fourth of the mortgage to pay her credit card debts. I then had to try to resell the materials, no refunds on lumber, etc., and move in with my dad less than a week later. I cut my mother off at that point. A few years go by and I rekindle with my mother. I then sell my condo, move in with my BF, and things don't work out with him. I end up having to move out in the middle of winter, no apartments are available. She offers me a room until spring so that I can have an apartment. I end up moving in reluctantly as my mother still has the party lifestyle going with my stepdad. They have been going together for close to 16 years at this point. I work for home full time so I see everything going in and out of the house. I catch my mom cheating on my stepdad with her best friend's boyfriend. Turns out that she had quit her job and would go meet up with him at the motel instead of working. Her best friend and her BF used to come over every weekend to party, and my stepdad was friends with them. Long story short, I ended up telling her best friend while we were out on a coffee run. Turns out she had suspicions of what was going on. She blew the whole thing wide open, and my mother found out I was the one who started this and blamed me for her infidelity. I moved out rather quickly after that. My mom was starting to spread lies and tell me that my stepdad wanted me to pay rent, which wasn't true. Anyways, I move out, and I have a BF, and I break up with him since he tries to sleep with my ex, and uh, keeps in contact with him trying to punish me for what I did. I got another boyfriend after him, and after I catch him with prostitutes, I end things with him as well. She does the same thing, doesn't even contact me, but goes straight to him and tries to sleep with him and stay friends. I haven't spoken to her since my last breakup. I gave up, cut off all contact with her, and blocked her everywhere. I then found out I was pregnant. She somehow found out I was pregnant and since then has forbade my half-sister from coming to see me or even contacting me. She blocked my number in her phone, on Facebook, etc., and has been drunk spamming all my friends and my dad about how much of a crap person I am. My dad finds it hilarious that she thinks that he would even listen to her. She has been trying to further isolate me as punishment for blocking her, and most recently she quote-unquote attempted the not alive and after quote-unquote miraculously surviving, has begun to tell everyone I'm a bad person for not going to see her at the hospital, and that I'm the reason she attempted not aliving. 
I use quotations because her suicide attempt was a gross exaggeration. She told everyone she had passed away for 10 minutes before she was brought back to life and that the hospital discharged her barely two hours after admission. I can't stand her anymore. She feels like she's entitled to my child, my life, and my mental health. That lady is disgusting. We don't have cotton candy flavored ice cream. So, I work at a small ice cream shop. The stuff here arguably tastes better than most of the bigger chain places around, and our biggest chain place sucks. Most of the locations are understaffed and going out of business. Part-time hours, minimum wage, pretty much every high school job you've ever had. Anyway, it's a slow day, but most of them are. A mother walks in with her son, probably seven to nine or so. There hadn't been a customer in over half an hour, and I was checking my texts. As long as we fulfill our duties, the boss doesn't care. He was on his phone, too. Right off the bat, she says, Employees shouldn't be on their phones because of customers. People where I live are insulting, and... She is somewhat right, I guess, so I shook that off quickly, and I apologized and began taking their order. She orders a chocolate waffle cone, simple. The kid wants cotton candy ice cream. The problem is we don't have that one. I think we did at one point, but not anymore. So I say the whole BS, oh sorry ma'am, we don't have that one. If you worked in fast food, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You don't mean it, but you say it to be nice. She was actually okay with it and just asked if I could check again or maybe in the back freezer. Since as far as I can remember there was cotton candy at one point, I thought there might be old stuff in the back. Probably not edible, but eh, expiration dates I could read. Not surprisingly, there were none there, so I go to my boss. Yeah, he went out on lunch or something, I don't freaking know, but he was gone. So I go to inform her that we absolutely do not have cotton candy ice cream. And then shit got real. She steps about as close to the counter as possible without going on top of it and says, My son wants cotton candy ice cream. And if he doesn't get it, we are leaving. Yeah. I try to talk directly to him and see if there's anything else he would want. He didn't respond with a word. I don't even know if he was currently listi listening on our parallel plane. He was like, zoned out. Not for long, a shrieking, hey, came from the mother. And we both bolt our heads at her. I said cotton candy flavored ice cream. Everybody has it. Don't lie to me. And we want it and a discount for the disrespectfulness. The kid looked like he really didn't want to be in this situation, but also like he didn't care at the same time. Reading posters on the wall. I don't even know what to say anymore because I don't want to get fired, but being friendly was off the table at this point. By now, anything we give her, she wouldn't pay for to begin with, so screw it. My boss is somewhat easygoing, but he probably wouldn't put up with her either anymore, so I break. Lady, we already have a freaking problem. You're going nuts because you want something we don't have. Not surprisingly, this didn't make her any happier. Now she's pacing, maybe preparing for a charge through the wall and into the freezer to prove me wrong or something. Eventually she just yells, Freak this! We're going to friendlies! Side note, I had one of Friendly's in where I used to live back as of when I was a kid. That was the shit. Oh. Okay, back on subject. And storms out with that kid. Someone walked in, who I'm gonna guess saw her pacing and screaming through the window, and boldly asks, What the hell just happened? To which we both just start laughing. Then the phone rings. Obviously, since I'm still laughing and it's just the phone, 
I don't put it together that it might be her. And it was her. Although I couldn't tell at first because it was supposedly the agency of the Better Business Bureau. Yeah, I know I'm not smart. I should have picked up on that. Essentially, Sharon, quote unquote, with the agency, quote unquote, says there have been numerous complaints lodged with the agency about our specific location, stating that there were numerous problems with the distribution of items and a sexual harassment case. Then I look out the window. In one of the parking spaces facing the sidewalk, a white Toyota with a lady screaming her freaking head off into a cell phone. So I make shit up into the phone. Okay, we get it. We'll fix things. Just get the cops with the shotgun to stop knocking on the door. The guy who came in after she left then, in a stroke of freaking Nobel Prize winning genius screams, Oh shit, they found the drugs, and signaled for me to hang up which after banging the phone on the counter by accident. But it might have sounded like a door breaking in. I did. Remember I said she was backed in one of those spots against the sidewalk? Yeah, she backed right over the curb and was gone. Bonus, my boss never came back from the, uh, I'm going to guess lunch break, so he'll, he'll hear all about this tomorrow. I hope you enjoy. Please like and subscribe, it helps the channel a lot. See you next time.